my name is Claire Goldsworthy and I'm the founder of The Fashion Advocate, an online community for Australian fashion, beauty and lifestyle brands. Through The Fashion Advocate, I support good people doing good things and I'm passionate about sharing their stories. I want to show you that if you have a great idea and the guts to make it work, that it can be done because there are people doing just that. I'm here today with Madeleine and Edwina from Girl World and we're going to talk about all things girly and gritty. Morning ladies. G'day. How are you going? Yeah, good. What is Girl World? So Girl World is an ed tech startup. We launched at the end of 2016 uh, at the University of Melbourne. Uh, and we launched the business because we were really trying to solve a problem for ourselves, which was how do we keep women engaged in the workforce and how do we bring up that next generation of girls to step into the future of work and not just survive, but thrive. So we launched Girl World um, as a business that really sets out to go and engage with girls, secondary school girls uh, around Australia. And what we do is we teach them skills in design thinking and entrepreneurship and leadership and really try and get them well equipped for the future of work. So let's talk about STEM. A lot of women, still don't even know what it is, but the way that the, or I guess all industries are moving, um, girls need to know about it now. Tell me a bit more about it. Why is it important that we seriously start encouraging our girls into the STEM? So STEM um, being science, technology, engineering and maths is fundamentally important because it is the future. If we think about what's driving us forward, it is largely based around science, technology and engineering. Um, so it's important because it's where our future is heading, it's where future jobs are growing and we know that 75% of jobs are going to require our technical skill sets in the future. So we need to encourage girls and boys into pursuing careers and jobs including STEM because it's our future economy, it's our future world. We think about how many, how many pieces of technology we use today and how much it's growing, it's, it's exponential. So it's really important for the future of our Australian economy that both men and women continue to pursue and um, get into um, STEM fields. Yeah. Part of the work we do is, um, we used to operate under this premise that girls can't be what they can't see. One of the big things, as Edwina has said in the STEM field, is women are hugely underrepresented right now. It's a big bro club. Um, yeah. And we really yeah, need I, to... I want to ask why though. I, I want to... Because traditionally, if we look at all the... So if we look at all the research, we can see that girls select out. They select out of the subjects in high school and they start to select out even if they go into coding courses or into engineering. They're very underrepresented at that early tertiary phase. So it's this... Um, it's sort of this systemic layered bias. So we have sort of economic, social, political, all of those things layer up um, so that we see this attrition rate of girls out of those fields. Um, so what we try and do is showcase role models. So we work with companies um, and showcase women inside Airbnb, Atlassian, Twitter, some of the big tech companies in the world to show girls what they can be, to sort of, I suppose, give face to what does it look like to be a, an active, thriving woman in STEM. Um, and I think, I think one thing that's worth mentioning is STEM's very sexy right now, okay? We, we keep hearing about STEM and it's getting shoved down the throats of the next gen um, as this sort of critical skill that they need. And that's certainly an area we think is, is fundamental to, um, to fueling you know, their capacity for the future of work. What we also know is we have this concurrent rise of human skills. So we see that in an age of automation and globalisation of artificial intelligence that this high-tech society is actually also creating this concurrent need for creativity and, um, and sort of compassion and collaboration and all these deeply human skills that can't be replicated. So we work across um, both spheres really um, where we try and get those students to yes engage with STEM and un understand its core application uh, for the future of work but also what are those other skills you're going to need to cultivate to survive and they are those 21st century skill sets uh, and self-leadership and self-direction and entrepreneurship and problem solving which which are not actually things that can be taught through through pure you academic discipline. You can't get them from, you know, robots and technology. Exactly. Yeah. These are the things we must sort of yeah. uh, look within yeah, yeah. to get. That's really good, having a balance, I guess. Um, and I think back to when I was at school, um, these kinds of subjects and anything to do with STEM, it wasn't even talked about. I mean, I know that was only, you know, 12, 15 years ago, but I think it's really great that people are talking about it and encouraging women and girls into areas that they previously, I guess, when, you know, it was not a thing to do. So I, I think it's really beautiful that you are encouraging young women to do that. Yeah. Um, I think if I, you put yourself, if I just jump in there, if you put yourself in the shoes of a 14, 15, 16, 17 year old girl sitting inside a school who has to make decisions that are going to impact her future, 
and you ask her to pursue STEM just because it's important. Going back to what Mad says, it's important that we explain why. Why is STEM technical skills that's so important? And that's where role models and real world um, industry experience yeah. is really important. Give them good problems to yeah. solve. Um, yeah. Because yeah. we know that, um, that work experience isn't really a thing anymore in school. So we're asking students to make decisions, kind of blind decisions, trusting that STEM is important, but not actually understanding why it's so important. Yeah, yeah, no, it's so good. Um, let's also talk about the forthcoming book that you're working on. Yeah, you, it's you our are little, not your face. It's that little passion project yeah. that has suddenly turned into a juggernaut. Um, what is it? You had me fire yak about this, it. okay. Uh, it's super exciting. It, it, uh, what is it? it? It's a little um, bugbear that wouldn't go away. And it was us, as we've worked with thousands of girls uh, here and, and increasingly, you know, accessing kids in other markets that are quite interested in what's going on up into Singapore and India and over in the US uh, for our, our World of Work platform. We recognised we needed to get closer to our user, if you like, really understand what's going on. What does it feel like to be a 15 year old girl in the world today? And so this project was really born of that where we thought, let's go out and we did an open call for material for uh, for a storytelling project really and the title was You Are Not Your Face and really trying um, to understand what is it that girls need beyond this, this hyper social media world that they, uh, that they exist within, this contouring and all this external um, gratification. What do they need to build within? What are those riches within um, that, that they need to go forward with? And um, so we put an open call out about three weeks ago. We've had hundreds of submissions. It absolutely slammed us. We would wake up and out. It was out of control, the amount of material coming in literally from the middle of Pakistan to Europe to all over the world. And girls, literally, it was like raw stories from them about this is how it feels to be me. I am really unsure about who I am, where I'm going and how to make choices. My frame of reference is, is small and how can I access the people and the knowledge and the wisdom I need to make sense of myself as a human. So it's a really powerful um, storytelling project and that will ultimately be pulled into a book uh, and it'll be illustrated partly by us and also by um, by girls across the world. And uh, we hope we get, we get that out into the world uh, first quarter next year. Um, but a really, it's really a voices of a generation that we hope to capture. And I think for us the remarkable thing was just the sheer volume of content and the power of those stories coming through. And just the diversity of the stories mm. too and, and themes that we didn't realise were so important and uh, for, for young young girls. Yeah. It's kind of forced us to really think hard about our, our business and how we're really equipping and empowering that next generation of girls to reach their potential and yeah. to make a real impact in, in the world they're living in. Yeah. It's been fascinating. It has, and I think one thing that's taught us and a bit of a wake up is you know, you can make assumptions. Mm -hmm. I think you can gallop along on your horse and your business and you know, we, we bridge we basically bridge you know, students with industry, you know, and then we look at what governments are doing and say, all right, well where, you know, what are some of the things happening there that we need to bring in. So we almost have a bit of an academic uh, foundation to what we do. And I think this gave us a good chance to go back into that you know, that really um, important spot, which is what is it like to be in a, girl, a girl in the world that today? That human-centred design. We talk yeah. a lot about the importance yeah. of putting a human at the centre of yeah. a problem. And well, that's exactly what this book is forcing us to do, is to really put that student, that girl, at the centre of everything we're doing, to really understand what's going through their mind, what's motivating them, what's scaring them, what's frustrating them, to make sure that we're solving and we're providing them with the best support possible through Girl World. Yeah. I can't wait for that book yeah. to launch. That's so exciting. I mean, I, I wish I had something like that when I was growing up as a girl. I think one of the biggest things as a female is that you, you are constantly, I mean, even now with social media, you are constantly comparing yourself to other women and you're not sure what other women are going through. So I think opening that conversation for young women is a really beautiful yeah. thing. And it's it sounds like it's going to be incredible. And it's yeah. also told by, like, the best thing about it is it's girls talking to other girls um, yeah. as opposed to this kind of external group of people kind of telling them the way the world is. It's yeah. so authentic and raw because mm. it's coming through the voice of their generation. It's beautiful. Yeah, there's um there's a poem that uh, someone submitted. Um, we published it on our, our platform, and there was a line in it which I thought was absolutely exquisite. And uh, and it, and sh this young girl, she's 14, uh, wrote, um, "Tell your daughters to love their bodies," uh, and it had a number of things. But it's, "Tell your daughters to love their bodies because the swing of their hips will not determine their destiny." Oh, wow. 
uh, and it's you know these young people. Yeah. They're smart. They're insightful. They're they're looking out at the world, mm. and um, yeah, it's it's been a real privilege. I just got goosebumps. Then. So, that's that's beautiful. Yeah. Um, I can't wait for that to come out. And you've also got an event coming up in February. What's that? And Lots what's, of events yeah, coming so up next events. year. Yeah. So it's a big part of our business model yeah. is events and, okay. and workshops. Yeah. So our, in 2017, we decided to, how do we start manifesting all of this great work and how do we start providing young girls with opportunities to engage, to learn, to get access to role models. So we, we started um, kind of working out how could we design an event or a real world experience for young girls from all across Australia. So that's where the WOW Summits were born and WOW standing for World of Work Summits. And what they are, we've got three or four coming up next year, one in Sydney, one in Melbourne, and one in regional Victoria, and perhaps one elsewhere, um, TBC. Um, and they are two-day events, interactive events, that look at what are the, the future-facing kind of skill sets, those human skill sets that Mads was talking about um, earlier, what are those... Um, problem solving 21st century skill sets of communication and um, collaboration um, we're, we're looking at real world problems and how we equip young girls to be able to solve them through using design thinking which is a human centered design methodology which is looking at how do we keep putting humans at the center of our problems so we keep creating businesses and solutions and products that solve human problems uh, the second day is a more of a TED style event for girls where we bring in amazing incredible role models from all over the world from um, startups from giant tech companies to Antarctic explorers um, and they share their stories and kind of a really practical advice and tips to young girls so we bring to life industries like STEM industries or political industries, journalism industries, um, and really unpack what, what does that career look like and how they tracked from being a young girl like the, the audience to where they are today. And we look at it through the lens of world-shaping leaders. So we provide girls with world-shaping mindsets. We provide girls with future-facing tech sets. So what are those technical skills that they're going to need in the future? And what are their work-ready skill sets that they're going to need to be able to step into that future of work? This is exciting. This is I feel like there's been no better time to be a girl growing up. I mean, there's a lot going on, but it, there's also a lot of support out there, and I'm, I'm really excited that you exist as a business. It's, uh, I'm excited for when I have young women to know that you, you're going to be here for the children that I have. It's exciting. Thank you so much for sharing your story today. It's absolutely beautiful, and I can't wait for the book, and I'm going to pen those events in my diary. If you would like to learn more about Girled World, head to girldworld.com. And as always, tune in next time for more stories of good people doing good things. Bye.